Welcome to Moments That Matter. I'm Stanley Kelly, pastor of Fellowship Baptist Church, here with Curtis Harmon. And Curtis, we're here jumping back in to 1 John chapter 2. We are steadily chipping away at the old ice block here, man. We're, um, I guess, maybe about halfway done. We'll right, in the heart, us, right in the heart of it. Yeah, right, 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 in, right in the middle of the deep blue sea here. <laughs> and uh, enjoying our, our journey through this awesome epistle. Uh, today, Curtis, we're going to look at verse 22 and verse number 23. And as I read these Uh, to that question determines eternity. You know, who is Jesus Christ? And if you get him wrong, it doesn't matter what else you get right. <laughs> and it doesn't matter what else you may have in life. If you do not get Jesus Christ right, uh, you have nothing in this world and definitely in the world to come. And hopefully we can remember what John's already said about him. Yeah. Knowing that you know, what we think about him and yeah. changes the way we walk. Yeah, sure. Changes the way we act, how we think about sin. And so he kind of sets it up there in the beginning for us. And I yeah. think, you know, that'll help us to remember that. Yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's read verse 22 and 23. John says, who is a liar, but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is antichrist. And so here's another defining point of the characteristics of, a, of Antichrist. Uh, he is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. And so I believe it's very apparent when you read these two verses that there has risen in John's day and and you know, most likely had at least threatened the church of God in John's day. This false teaching concerning the identity of who Jesus Christ really was. And we know through, uh, you know, the chronicles of, of church history that, that as John the apostle is the last of the apostles as far as alive, uh, John is encountering things that none of the other apostles had to deal with at large. And one of those things is the rise of what, what we call Gnosticism. And, and Gnosticism was this idea that I have special knowledge and, and Gnostic from, from knowing. And, and I, it was, it was this idea that I've had this transcendent experience there's been this bestowal of knowledge upon me where I know something that other believers don't know. Which if we were to back up, that's why John has already said uh, in definitive terms back in verse 20 and 21 that all genuine believers have an unction from the Holy One and all genuine believers know the truth. There, there's This isn't like one of those secretive cult kind of things. Christianity is very open in the sense that there are no secret doctrines. There, there is no certain class of chosen believers that have access to more knowledge than other believers do. Uh, and so there was this rise of Gnosticism and, and inside of that large heading, there were different branches. Um, and, and some of those branches of the Gnostics were beginning to go off track in the, the person and the nature of who Jesus Christ really is. And so he begins verse 22. He says, who is a liar? And, and he's going to tell us a liar is someone who denies that Jesus is the Christ. And, and that expression, the Christ, Christos, the, that, that he is the Messiah. He's the long awaited anointing one, anointed one who was going to be the redeemer. This this title of Jesus carries with it, you know, volumes, if you will. And, and in that expression, the, the church has always understood, that the true church has always understood that the Christ is, is God and he's man. He's the God man. And the theological articulation of that is that he is fully God and he is fully man. 
And if, if someone comes along and lessens that to any degree or makes that lopsided in one way or the other, they have severely gone off track. And John says, you're a liar. If you get the person of Jesus wrong, you are nothing short of being a liar. In fact, if, if you go as far as to begin denying um, the persons of the Godhead, you are defined, verse number 22, as being an antichrist. This is serious business, Curtis. And I love how you connected that to the, him saying that we have an unction there yeah. and that we know all things. I mean, we could probably say, I just wonder if we could say that, you know, being a liar really is related to knowledge because yeah. what are you, most times if you're lying about something, you're lying about knowledge or having it or not having it or yeah. deny. And he uses the word deny and that person denieth. And when you're talking about Christ and think about the, the idea that we know all things, almost like he was telling us in verse 20, you know better. Yeah. yeah you as right. believers, you know better. You know all yeah. things. In other words, yeah. we didn't just make that up. We didn't just learn something up in and of ourselves we have an unction from the holy yeah, one yeah sure he taught us yeah that's right we know it from him we yeah. didn't make it up and now those that are the opposite of that yeah the liars they're kind of faking that knowledge yeah that's right they're, yeah but they're doing it by denying the denying yeah. the cross yeah. and they're first liars just by their own belief system they they've deceived you know they're they're they're, they're going against the truth, which is the very definition of what it is to be a liar. And they are propagating that. And so he, he continues, he is antichrist that denieth the father and the son. And, and the idea is you, you deny their compatibility. You, you deny their, their unity. You know, Jesus said, if you have seen me, you have seen the father. You, you haven't just seen a representation. You haven't just seen, um, you know, a, a, a good portion of him. But Jesus says, you have seen him. And so they are, they are connected. We, we, you know, when, when we talk about the Trinity, we are talking about the tri-unity of the Godhead, Father, Son, and Spirit. And, and they are three persons, three personalities, three persons, one God. And so John goes on, verse number 23, whosoever denieth the Son. And so right there, Curtis, we could underscore that. Whosoever denieth the Son. This is, John is addressing what he's saying to those who are clearly denying the deity of Jesus Christ. They're, they're denying the sonship of Jesus Christ. And so traditionally, if we were to, if we were to just real quick shoot through some of the heresy that has arisen concerning the, the person, the identity of Jesus Christ. There have been those who, who early on in church history uh, wanted to present Jesus as only a man. And if you remember, that's, that's what the religious leaders, even in the gospel records, wanted to convince themselves and others of, that this is just a man. And so when he's claiming to be God, this is blasphemy because he is just a man. And so th there have been others to follow. And, and still today, you know, there'll be folks that sometimes knock on your door and they want to convince you that Jesus Christ is only a man. And so they've gone off track. There, there, uh, another, you know, heresy as far as the person of Jesus Christ is that, that Jesus is part man and part God. You know, kind of like if you had a bottle and you filled it up halfway with one substance and halfway of another substance and they kind of look at Jesus Christ like he's 50% God and 50% man. And so he's, he's not fully God, but he's not fully man either. And, and this is wrong. This is heresy. Uh, a third way to, to go off track concerning Christ is that, um, he is a man that became God. And, and uh, again, there's, there's folks who uh, knock on your door. And most likely this category of people would be riding a bicycle and they'd have a backpack on maybe and they would, They'd be like 19 years old and call themselves an elder. <laughs> and they would want you to know that, that Jesus is, is simply a man who became God. And, and they would present this kind of hope that you're a man that could maybe possibly become God one day too. And that's, that's heresy. That is unorthodox Christianity. You didn't derive that from the teaching of Christ himself. You didn't derive that from the apostles whom Christ commissioned to be teachers of the word of God. You didn't derive that from, from the apostles uh, giving the truth to those who were up underneath them and the orthodox Christian faith from, from the New Testament to the 21st century 
is, is not that Jesus is a man that became God. Uh, number four, some would say he is a man with God-like qualities. And then number five, he is God with only the appearance of a man. And so the pendulum swings in the opposite direction. Some would say, well, he's, he's just God and he just appears to be a man. All of this is wrong. And, and John is saying in verse 22 and 23, you have to get Jesus Christ right. He is fully God. He is fully man. Theologically, we call that the hypostatic union. And uh, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, these three are one, and and they are coexistent, eternally existent, and of of the same substance. They're not of the, they're not a similar substance. They are the same substance. And Jesus Christ is just as much God as God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. And it can't be any other way, right? And people who deny that He's the Christ, they don't just come out and you know. That's why the Bible calls them wolves in sheep's clothing. Yeah, they deny Him, but they have. They, that's why people are so intimidated. Yeah. They, they dress it up real cute. Like. They've, they've got a lot of knowledge. Like we said, they've got the wrong kind of knowledge. I mean, yeah. they, they they dress it up. They, they've got it perfect. They can intimidate people yeah. with their knowledge. But on the other hand, Jesus, you know, he says there, you know, that that, that person hath not the Father. Yeah, right, yeah. And remember, Jesus said that my sheep hear my voice and I know them. Yeah, right. And they follow me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And they, ha they, they no might follow him. Is that what he said? Yeah, no, no, no. no they will follow. They will yeah. follow me. And, yeah. and that these these false teachers are denying that he's the Christ. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They do it with knowledge. They don't yeah. just say, "Hey, he's not the Christ." They say he's not the Christ, and here's why. And they intimidate you with what you think is knowledge. Yeah, yeah. Let, let me just point out real quick, and we're almost out of time. But just just the progression. If you were to go back just several verses, the progression of these folks, and again, we see it 21st century. Goldsboro, North Carolina, you know, it happens. Here's a, here's a group who were inside of a church. They were functioning possibly even in, in terms of being leaders inside of the local church. They begin to defect from the faith. Maybe they went through church discipline. Maybe they left of their own accord. And they go out and they, they, they continue to deteriorate in their theology. And they're doing everything they can to wreak havoc on the true church of God. And so John is, is just, he's this bold preacher that we've been talking about this whole time through, the, through this study, uh, who is saying, these guys are not just good old boys who disagree with us on some minor areas. This is antichrist. Warning. Yeah, these are, these are not our friends. We don't go to their meetings. We don't pray with them. Yeah. We don't yoke up with them. We have nothing to do with them. God has exposed them. They're an for, example. Yeah, for what they are. And so mark them and, and avoid them. Let's stay away from them because they are anti. They, they've got Jesus Christ wrong. That's right. And, and so they're wrong. And so it, it begs the question, you know, do you have Jesus Christ right? And, and you, better, you better be dead sure that you do. Because eternity is mighty long mm -hmm. and hell's mighty hot for a person who gets the identity of Christ wrong. Well, thank you for tuning in today to Moments That Matter. And we look forward to spending some more time around God's Word in our next session.